Hey up everyone, and welcome to our first episode of our Crusader Kings 3 playthrough. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Crusader Kings 3 is like a grand strategy game, um, like a dynasty simulator, a sim you could say, um, that was made by Paradox Interactive uh, last year in September, so it's been out for about five months. Um, it's very similar to their other games of Crusader Kings 2 and 1, uh, Hearts of Iron, Victoria, Europa Universalis, um, but I personally I prefer Crusader Kings out of all of them. Um, so I thought I would do a bit of a playthrough for the newest one. Uh, today we are going to be playing as not Greece, but we're going to be playing as the Counts of Laconia or Laconia. The Greek community is probably going to hate me for all the mispronunciations that are going to happen in this playthrough, so I apologise for that now. Um, as you'll see, uh, the person that I'm playing is called Count Sol of the House of Northern. Now, originally, CK3, or Crusader Kings 3, didn't come out with a rule designer similar to Crusader Kings 2, but then later on was released with one. So I've just tried it out myself. Um, it was very fun, um, it's a lot more to it than it was in CK2. Um, I'll just quick, quickly run you through my character, so he's the same age as I am. Um, I decided to go with the House of Northern instead of the House of Saul, because it just sounds cool, sounds pretty cool. Uh, I know that we're currently in the more southern part of the world, but we'll just skip past that pretty quickly. Um, I've sort of based a lot of the traits on me a bit, but not so much. Um, so here we've got Stubborn, we've got Gregarious, we have Raffle, we have Lazy, and we have Paranoid. Uh, and just for a bit of flavour, um, my character is also a drunkard. So that should bring some very interesting uh, situations that will crop up. Now, I will do a very short walkthrough of the UI when we get into the game, but I'm not going to be as thorough as I would be in, say, Battle Brothers. Um, because, because, too rightly, CK3 got its UI like down to a T pretty well compared to CK2. It's a lot more user-friendly than Crusader Kings 2. Um, without further ado, uh, let's get in. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so played on Iron Man because really that's the only way we're ever going to be playing games. There's no point uh, reloading, whatever. We're just going to get through it. It's to be a note that when your character dies in Crusader Kings, uh, you go then go to your heir. If you do not have an heir, the game is over. Now I've picked a starting date of 867 AD, you can pick other starting dates like 1066 and so on, down, so on and so forth. It just means that the earliest starting date means the game lasts a hell of a lot longer. And I plan on getting to the other side with one person or another. But for now, let's just set ourselves up. We've got our one county of Mistra. Um, my goal for this playthrough is to create the kingdom of Hellas and then slowly try and usurp the Byzantine Empire. You know, nothing too fancy, just try and take out the Byzantines. Because uh, I want a free Sparta. So I'll briefly go over the UI and a few other parts of the game. Uh, as you see, this is our capital down here. Uh, you've got the dates, you've got the speed of the dates, you've got any uh, pieces or wars around here. You've got your character in the bottom left here. You've got your lifestyles, which can make a difference. Uh, I will choose my lifestyle now. Because um, one of my perks was to do with Marshall, or traits even, um, I will be picking Marshall because, you know, it makes sense. Um, and then in each of the lifestyle tree, lifestyle areas, you've got three different trees. Now you can only, you can complete as many as you want, but you need to start somewhere. Um, so I am going to first and foremost, because I want to expand, which is going to require a bit of fighting. So I do believe I will be going for a strategy.
focus first and foremost. Um, and I will choose, I'm actually going to choose, even though I have just picked strategist, I'm actually going to choose stalwart leader just to increase my prowess, because my prowess isn't fantastic. So prowess is based on your individual personal combat ability, and the higher it is, the better chance you've got in like duels, per se. Um, and, with, and I do plan on leading the troops myself, so it is pretty important. You got your stress levels. Every time you get up to a certain stress level, you do have a breaking point, and several things might happen. You might end up getting like really super negative traits, like drunkard, that might show up. Um, we'll try and avoid that. You can do certain things to lower your stress. ETC is a whole system within it. This shows my house. This is the house I am. Obviously, I am the only house member so far within your houses. You've got your dynasty tree. Obviously, it's only me because I'm the only living member. You've got your legacies as well, so you slowly accrue renown throughout your time. Um, and it's throughout your entire tree, it's not just you, and it carries over. And the more you get, you can then use to unlock certain legacies, which you then are then permanent for your house. So for example, unlock the house warriors, you get part, everyone gets prowess plus 2, night effectiveness is plus 15%. Noble Veins, uh, chance of inheriting good congenital traits is 30%, chance of new good congenital traits plus 30%. So it's it's a mix, um, and you do get to chop and choose when you eventually get the renown to actually do it. Uh, let's get out of him. You've got your religion, I'm Orthodox. You've got your culture, who which is Greek, obviously. Um, based on what culture... Um, you're in and who the culture head is depends on what um, technology is being researched. This is the thing in 2 which I, the technology tree in 2 I wasn't a super big fan of. I love what they've done with the technology of tree number 3. Um, it's it's great. Um, I think it's really interesting that you get a culture head as well. Obviously I'll probably never be the culture head until very late in the game because the culture head is most likely going to be the head of the Byzantine Empire at all times because they've got more counties with the culture built into it. Um, over here, you've then got your main, the main stuff you want to keep an eye on. So, your income, your prestige, your piety, your renown, your army, your domain on holding as well as the maximum size. You can hold more than it, but then everyone starts getting really pissy with you. You've got your realm, you've got your military, You've got your council, who I might have a look and see if I can change around in a minute. You've got your court. You've got intrigue, which are like schemes and secrets that you know. And you've got factions. Fortunately, there's no factions against those yet. There's surprisingly no factions against uh, the Byzantine Empire. That will probably happen soon. And then there's decisions, certain things like that will change the game, like going on a pilgrimage, <laughs> indulging in drink, for example will lose some stress, but it'll sp spend prestige because I'm acting on not like noble. Uh, you've got, you know, why does it really matter? Uh, you've got current situations, so these are sort of the suggestions on what's going on right now. Um, these are the things that you should really look into straight away, like the pl place cards. You don't really need the encyclopedia, I'm already sort of an encyclopedia, so I'm just going to skip this lesson. I'm not married. I've started off completely unmarried because it actually costs to, if, to start off married with a customized character. Um, it will be something that I'm going to sort out as quickly as possible. Obviously, marriage is sort of big on getting alliances in this game, so I will be looking for someone who I can get a good alliance with, as well as someone who has good congenital traits I can then pass on to my heirs, which will then go down the line and continue getting a million good congenital traits to give to like. The the best lad, the absolute madman who will take back, who will take back, who will take the Byzantine Empire for Sparta. Uh, obviously, I've got no heirs, I've got no children. These two are sort of sort each other out to an extent, and I've still got three perks to take because I forgot that it actually said four, not one. So, still a leader, that's fine. I love my knights, so I'm gonna go for that. I don't know why I didn't go gallant. Honestly, I'll take Cassius Belli cost basically a reason for war um, and it always costs so having that by 50% is a massive difference uh, let's see what are the other differences organized march is pretty I mean they're all pretty good let's be honest 
Natural Dread and Control. Control does help. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We're going to go Organize March. I think I'll go for Sith of the Crown next. Pop out of there. I am going to quick look, see who I can marry. Alright, let's see. So, need someone who, it would help if it's in the same religion. And also who isn't insane. And has some pretty good traits. Uh, Alliance power. No. No, 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 no. You're Greek. And, oh god, what the hell is that? Oh, you're stuttering. Don't really kind of try to avoid stuttering children. Stubborn, wrathful, gluttonous. Come on, someone's got to have. Ooh. No, you have to, mm, that's waiting too long. That's good. Wow. Oh, okay. You're Greek, you're orthodox, and you've got hail. Which is congenital, so it's possible that our children could inherit both that and my quickness. She's just impatient, she's ambitious, she's paranoid, just like me! And the dynasty is... alright. You could be up there with a good shout. Let's quickly just scroll down, see if there's anyone else. Ooh, someone had it. I think it's probably going to be Antipatra. Because not only is she a part of a house, so we'll get a alliance, there's also a chance of good congenital traits. Now, where are you from? <laughs> That's not a lot, man, but it's about the same as my guys. Where are you? You're up here somewhere. Antipatria? Or oh, agro... Anyway, you're, you're up there. I'm going to send a proposal. I'll get a bit of an alliance with another Greek area up here. Um, which is fine, because if we go to war, they can come and help me and use the sea as a way to get here. I think for today, I'm going to try and see what I can do with the four territories around me. Obviously, I've got a liege who is then under the main liege. I am at the lowest point. I am a count. So, the aim would be to get the duke, and then possibly king, or in this case, it'd be despot, because I'd be under the Byzantine, and then go from there. That stands, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of anything, so I'm just going to let the game play for a bit and see what happens, because anything could be around the corner in Crusader Kings. Gladly accept your marriage proposal. Fantastic! That is what I'd like to hear. So. The marriage to Countess Antipatria de Rome expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal lay duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during the time of jubilation. Of course, I'll collect it, you're getting 75, or I'll let my subjects... I'll, I'm going to let my subjects enjoy the festivities without worry or care. I do like getting a good amount of prestige. The higher prestige and piety you get, the higher your level of fame and level of devotion are, which, if it holds up, I'll show you. So, it's spent on certain things like doctrines and changes in the law. Oh! Hello! To my vassal, who is the do... Chris... Chris... Chrysaphius? Chrysaphius of Achaea. Told you I'm gonna butcher them, who literally lives just down the road. As an influential count, it is only fair that you have voice in my council. In recognition of this fact, I hereby offer you a steward of... Hmm... I mean, he's given me steward, but I've only got a nine in stewardship, which isn't the best. But I'm not gonna say no. Because I get a bit of extra pay for being... Um... Part of this council, most of the time, anyway. I'm now going to have a quick look at my own council. Let's have a quick look. So my wife, who assists my assist the ruler, um, you can get her to sit on several different things instead, but she just generally assists the ruler. She gives you pluses across the board, which I think is better, unless you're very focused on something else. I can't change my bishop. I never will. He doesn't like me, so he's not giving me anything for it. Um, I am going to try to sway him a bit, because I want him to like me. It's always good to make sure your bishop is on your side. So I am going to try and sway Bishop Daniel. Uh, Chancellor Anthemus, 10 diplomacy. Anyone better? No. Anyone better than 2 stewardship? Jesus Christ. No? 
Marshall's 11. Yep, that's fair enough. And. Well, who's this? Ah, oh, he's the Marshal. Uh, I could pick her. You know what? Yeah, give me a. S I'm gonna look into finding more people to bring onto my court because right now there's not really anyone there. It's always good to get a court position as well, but I haven't got loads of money right now, so it might not be worth it. I'm just gonna quickly click on Mistra. Now you can actually build extra place, extra buildings in your holding. It's always worth doing um, because it adds extra like fort levels or garrison troops. Um, as well as tax among like many other things. Um, I don't really have enough money to build anything right now, so I'm going to leave it for the time being. We also Mon Vasia, which is a city, um, which is a different type. I can't really uh, hold it myself. Nope. I'm just going to click that off. That's just talking about bishop endorsement, which I already mentioned, which is why I'm trying to get him on our side. Which he now is, so he's endorsing me. That's great. I mean, he's got no levies and he's got no taxes to give me, so... It wasn't really that much point, I suppose. But that's fine. To make my suffragan Bishop Daniel more susceptible to my attempts at approaching him, I conclude a compliment in my mi next missive to his court. I'll be sure to mention his... Hmm... Forgive his nature. Unshakable faith in God is a good is a good set. I'm sure I can't insult a man of God for that. There you go. Excellent. He really likes me. He really likes me. Um, these little spots here, you can actually construct new holdings, and there's different types of holdings. Obviously, castles, the ones I hold. Cities and temples are more for like burghers and priests. Um, Oh, bishops. Obviously, I don't actually have a bishopric in here, so he's not really got a job right now, <laughs> I suppose. Um, so there's no temple holdings for him to pull off. With me being the steward, uh, in the other guy's court, because he is my lord, I do actually get a bit of extra money, uh, and it's also cheaper to build stuff, I get a bit more domain taxes, and I also get stewardship lifestyle experience, which I'm not really using right now, because I am completely a military man. Oh, and I'll soon get another perk. It's good as it'll also tell you um, when you're pretty close to getting a new perk. You just gotta follow that around. Plus and then, a fine cider. A calm in the evening after a long day of training. My tankard is knocked out of my hand by a mercenary reeling from a blow, and all hope of, re of relaxation drains away into the floor along with my cider. Let's have a look. I lose 75, you gain the generosity of mercenaries, and you gain 50. Country of Laconia gets expunged. You know what? I'm gonna go for that one. Expunged bandits. I don't really hire mercenaries all that much anyway, and I won't be doing any time soon because they are quite expensive. And looking at my money, I do not have that. I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. Because the music really kicks in when you least expect it. And once again, great soundtrack, but boy can it get loud. So my counselors believe their job is theirs by right of blood or influence alone. How wrong they are. I expect results here. I am often disappointed. Boy, is that the case. So, my wife wants to help me by making my council a little bit better. Now, if we do it to Amphimos, he lose, lose opinion. No, we all lose opinion. <sighs> well, he's only got eight. Like, can I not pick Maximus instead? Because he sucks. I mean, sucks. Oh, man. I think it might have to be the mayor, to be honest, because at least the other two have uh, got double digits, whereas this idiot now has double digits. There you go. 
Yes, I know they still want to play her. Uh, give me, give me time, game. Like she likes me, but not that much. I'll finish swaying the bishop, and then I'll sway my own wife. <laughs> Welcome to CK3. <laughs> I care more about what the Pope thinks of my own wife. I run with scheme power, serve the crown, hit and run. I'm gonna go serve the crown. And speed things up a bit. I own a little part of the world. I'm gonna zoom out quickly as well. This is the world. This is the map. It goes all the way into parts of, like, China. Obviously, it goes to the very part of what is then the Western world. Um, in CK2, there was a few more expansions which brought like Aztec, the Aztec invasions, um, which is obviously a bit of fun. It's also mental. There's no DLC for CK3 yet, but no doubt if it's anything like CK2, there'll be loads to happen. In anticipus in an efforts to improve my relations with my neighbors, my good for nothing chancellor has officially acknowledged Count Constant. What? You did what? <laughs> who, are, who are you? Which one are you? To the left of me. Oh, great. So now he could try and take my place. Because he's got an unpressed claim. Because my Chancellor's a dumbass. Nice. He's got 20 less men than me. What's his prowess? The same as mine. He's... yeah. That could be an issue. I mean, I do want to take it anyway, so if he does attack me, it might work out in my favor. But also, I've just started, mate. Give me a second to breathe. Let me get an air out before I get m murdered. Oh, it's all ga it's game over, man. Game over. At the end of the field exercise, it, see I it had seemed a brilliant idea. To practice regrouping an army in disarray, I split my troops and ordered every officer to independently make the way to Mistra. Of course, by the third day waiting, with only half my army in place, I am now seeing flaws in the plan. Por Porphyrius, Porphyrius suggests I ride out with a contingent of the terrier to find the missing troops, while the rest of the army returns home. Yeah, you know, let's go. Let's go on an adventure to find my army. As I pass through a small village, I notice that through clad in simple cloth, the town's guards are all carrying weapons with my mark on them. Welcoming me in the muddy streets with Gre Gregoras, the self-proclaimed divine guardian of the town, my soldiers laid down their armor to help this preacher preachers to help this preachers serve God. Ah, oh boy. So it's twenty opinion, You spend. Ooh, they're not gonna like that. You know what? Get out of here! This is my place. And here an absolute ruckus coming from a roadside tavern. One of my heterier kicks open the door, revealing a room full of my wayward soldiers. Ah, oh, surprise, surprise, we're just at the pub. My rival makes them fall silent and stare down at their tankards with nary a word between them. The proprietor narrows his, her eyes. So you're responsible for this rabble? Oh. Ooh. I okay. can't. I am, I am the gregarious type. I'm not paying. I could drink with them. I could abandon the search. You know what? Grab a drink for the road, man, and let us be off. Although, I think I will pretend. Perfect! Bearing a child. So our, as long as it, the child is born, if I still happen to die in error or from old age, that happens as well. Obviously, we can't all live forever. I will then go on to this heir. Now, it's not always guaranteed it's going to be this child. If you have several children, the heir can be bounced around depending. It's good to have several children just in case they're backups. Um, but it also means that if you have more than one area that isn't like all together it might get split in half when you die and be given to like several children which becomes a bit of a mess 
When my Rounders brought news of the little encampment, I didn't expect to find the soldiers still practicing their battle formations. It seems that my Hateria took it upon himself to continue field exercises while waiting for word from the main army. That's actually quite smart. Very good. Overworked soldiers for five years. Well, I'm not stressed right now, so I don't think I need to take it. Are my soldiers being overworked going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Mate, they were not the orders I gave. Approaching the lake, I spot a camp pitched on its shores. As I enter it, I am met by the sergeant in charge. My lord, our water stores leaked while on the move, and our pack animal cannot make the march home without more water than we currently have. The soldier looks at me nervously. The lord and his terrier helped carry water skins, however. Me carry stuff? Do you know who I am? Let's have a look. If this is the only way, you spend 75, you gain 20 stress because I'm lazy. Yeah, so if you ever make a choice of something that goes against your, like, internal traits, so because I'm lazy, anything that requires a lot of effort, I gain stress from because it's not me, me as a character. For example, if I was a pacifist and I attacked, if I attacked someone, I would gain stress because it's not me as a character. So, a lot of plays in like that, which works really well in this game. It makes you roleplay each character in a completely unique way. Then we'll march and they'll march now. Desertion? Yeah, I don't really want them to desert. I still want to keep my search going. Ah, so because I have the military engineer trait, I can actually figure this out. I will become a little bit stressed, but you know what? I'm going to pick that one. Last of my troops have made it back to Mistra and orders have been order has been restored. But this was hardly a display of military brilliance, that's one thing for sure. I've gained a new perspective on my army and the individual soldiers of which it is composed. It was a valuable exercise after all. And I got a lifestyle perk. So there's some things which can happen where you just automatically get perks if you play along. Um and go down the right line. So now I have one more to spend. And I've also just got another one from it just unlocking. So let's pick two more. I am going to pick... Nah, no, I'm not going to pick that one, actually. I'm going to put Defender Advantage, just in case that guy decides to press his caster's bell eye against us, because he now has one. Um, Naval Speed, don't really need right now. And I will pick General Toughness and Pursuit. That sounds good to me. Now, the place in there is still building, as far as I'm aware. Yep, it's halfway there. I am ripe old age of 33. What are you playing for? Me playing for four years. Still no child yet, which I guess is fine for the time being. It will be interesting to see if a child either gets quick or hail. Or Halle, I assume it's hail. Halle? Hail. I'm going with hail. I'm going to stop swaying Daniel the Bishop because he, he very much likes me. He's also intimidated by me, so he's less likely to oppose me. Oh, our child is born. We're tired yet split will fire. Blissful smile, Antipatria presents me with a perfect little daughter. One day, child, you'll carry my legacy. I quite like the name Valeria. So, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna stay with that. May you be strong and wise, my child. So, if I die, then I will start playing as her. Obviously, because of medieval times and the way succession laws worked back in the day, if I then, if I now to have a son, the son will automatically become my heir. Um, there are ways you can change the laws yourself. Um, here we go, succession. So, as it stands, you've got male preference. You can change it to so equal or female preference or male only, female only. But, as you can see, it costs a bit of prestige, and I also don't have crown authority, and my religion doesn't work for it. So you need to have all these things hitting together for it to work. So it's going to be very unlikely that we'll be able to change it to equal, as cool as it would be. Um, but my <laughs> my religion won't allow it. Allow it. I don't want to change religion because 
everyone will see me as heretical and probably come to murder me. Now, when your children are growing up, you can choose who's going to educate them. So you get a ward and a guardian. You can make it yourself, but obviously they will come off your own traits. It's good to put them with someone whose traits you want to inherit, per se. So, like, better stewardship, better intrigue, so on and so forth. Ah, she inherited quick from me. But not the other congenital trait from my wife. That's fine, I guess. I'll take quick. Um, so, let's have a look at what education. Since she is female, as it is, she will be getting married off for an alliance. Such is life in 873 AD. So, it's always good to have a... Diplomacy is pretty good. Intrigue's pretty good as well. I'm gonna say diplomacy. And who will educate my child? Well, I suppose I could. Who else would be good? Who's got pretty good diplomacy? My wife's got better diplomacy than me, so there we go. All right, she had another child. I didn't even say this time. And this one is a son, so he will become my heir. Um, <laughs> I could name him after myself. Oh, that egotistical. Maybe. Let's have a look at what names we got. Wow, that's a hell of a name. Joachim. Joachim. Joachim? Jonas. Job. Yeah, Nikolaus. Nikolaus North. What? Nikki, old Nikki North. Let's go with that. Really rolls off the tongue. All right, all right, Daniel. I'm sending you away. If he's got a claim on my place, I want a claim on his place. So I'm going to try and fabricate a claim on the county to the left of me, so then I, I then have a reason to go to war. Um. Within the Byzantine Empire, you can fight. There is infighting allowed, so I will be able to go to war with him without drawing in, like, the Basilius. So the shining and peasants are milling about the tourney, hosted by my wife. All my... I'm not going to pronounce it. <laughs> announces a tournament in their honour, and for once I get to simply sit and watch. This is nice. I am not going to spend an entire tourney day stuck to a throne, however. So... If I cheer, everyone gains opinion of me for 20, which is actually pretty good. Or I just get some prestige. I'm actually going to cheer. Let's have a look at my... My boys. All five of them. So, you've got a certain amount. They're like your knights. Obviously, in different cultures, they'll have different names. Um, and higher power skill the better. So right now, our marshal... Has also got the best prowess skill. Surprise, surprise. Um, and then there's a few other people. So there's a few more on our council, like our spy master. So they can also be on the council. They can be part of your family, but they can also just be random people in your court. Uh, how expensive would it be to make a regiment? Not too expensive. So men at arm regiments are a bit separate. So, they're better than levies, they're actually professional soldiers, and then I have control over that. Um, and it's sort of like a rock, paper, scissors system of who wins against what. It's a bit more in-depth than that, because there's a lot more going on. But, it's good to have them, and I actually have some money right now, so I am going to get I'm gonna get some light horsemen. So, as you see, they count archers, they get pluses in plains and drylands, and they're in hills, mountains, desert mountains, wetlands, not so good. They have a unraised maintenance, which will eat into this, but in general, it's good. It's a good thing. Now, it does start off with five, but it slowly reinforces to 100 over time. Greetings, Count Sol of Lacanea. It has become clear that your bishop is working to establish a false and spurious claim on the county of Messenia. Messenia? Messenia? Do not think that the kind of dishonorable action will go without response. All right, fam. You weren't supposed to let him know. Now he knows. 
And he's still got the claim on my place. So he might end up revealing his hand before I do. I try to swim. I'm gonna try to swim. Yeah, you keep him busy. Lost our idea of the claim. Why are my face so red? I think I made my character so red faced. No, yeah, I, I like the look of him. I think he looks pretty cool. Ooh, there's a holy war. Now, holy wars are a little bit different to regular wars, as you could probably guess. And they're based on one faith against the other. Crusades, obviously, the title aforementioned, all based on that sort of stuff. You can join holy wars if you're part of the same religion. Um, it's really good because it ends up giving you like a few traits down the line if you do join in, do help. Like, it is one way of actually getting the Crusader King traits, which is a fantastic one to get. How's the fam looking? She's five, she's two. Now, it's a bit early, but it's always a good time. It's always good to arrange betrothals a bit earlier down the line. That way you've got allies off the bat instead of waiting. So let's see um, if there's anyone of... It's always good to have the same religion. Lost in Alliance Power. Count Raoul of Dijon. Mustard Man! Who are you? How many men do you have? You have 1,000 men. Interesting. Now, you can also click Matrilineal, but obviously he won't accept that. Um, where is this man? Where's Dijon? Obviously it's in France, but what region? Oh, well, it's actually in Lotharangia. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Sure. I'll take an alliance with a thousand of them. I'm also going to have a look at one for my son. Excelente. Also look for one for my son. Whoa! What just happened to me? Why am I infirm? I know I was pushing it, I should have just listened to what my body was telling me, but I chose to ignore it. I'll finish this before going to bed, just a couple more, then I'll rest. Suddenly I feel lightheaded, and as I go up, my vision went black. The next day I woke in my bed, unable to get up as my body refuses to listen to me. Perhaps God decided to punish me for not treating this vessel meant to serve the Lord with respect. I feel I can do naught but. Wow! I'm 39 and I'm about to die. My first character, Soul, is about to be off. Infirm is effectively the end. Good lord. Should have drank so much. Well, Nikolaus, good thing I just sorted out your wife because I might be about to be playing as a two year old. Great. Probably the last thing I'll do. I was fully expecting to get to like the ripe old age of 60. The soul? But he's barely pushed 40. Will he get to 40? Maybe. Oh boy. Oh. Hosting lords and ladies from realms near far. Some opportunities to portray Count Constantine. Missing in a good light has presented themselves. My lord, pray tell, who is the most state person have you heard of? No, oh, without a doubt, no. Actually, no, me, of course. Well, of course I know him, he's me. Oh. You've done it. Still for a lot of money, though. How? So I'd be, what, 18 in the hole? And it takes, I get two, so I'd be out of debt in like nine months. Saying that, I might also die, and if I die, then I'm going to lose the Unpressed Claim anyway. So, I'm actually, once again, sort of baiting you all on, but I'm going to say no, because if I get it, spend this money, put my county into debt, and then I become my child, because I die, he'll lose that claim. So, it's no point buying it. You've done it. And now, I'm not going to be in the hole with money, so I will press the claim. It is what it is. 
At first I thought the simple footman a fool for stepping onto the training field. However, the battle proved more hard fought than I expected, and it gradually became clear that he would be unable to stop his wild and vicious strikes from hurting me. This arming suddenly became a matter of life and death. I tried not to show my relief when the sword finally hit the ground. Wow, super stress. What is that? I can use more people like you. You gain it. You gain 140 stress because you are poor, paranoid and wrathful. So it's not just against my character. It's doubly against my character. This peasant and my soldiers will get a lecture on honor. That'd be good. <laughs> well, if I'm about to die, I'm taking someone with me. I strike him down where he stands. And the list of the people killed by Count Soul begins. Ah, my son has been born. You know what? If I'm gonna die so soon, I am actually gonna name after myself. And that way, Soul of the House Northern can live on. Ah, there you go. If you want to reminisce. Alright, anyway, let's let's crack on. New perk. Ooh, I could get more Night Slash Terry here. That'd be quite cool. Um, I'll actually give Siege Weapon Effectiveness, only on the basis that we're about to go to war. And I am going to take over his land. How many men's he got? 175. How many men does his friend have? 337. So probably about 500 men. I've got 325. And they're high quality. And I obviously don't know what his are. In terms of quality. So if he brings in allies, could be an issue, but I could also bring in allies of a fair decent amount more men. So you know what? Let's do it. Let's try and do something with his life. I'm just gonna I just wanna take this. This is mine. This is mine now. So let's go for it. So there's the cost for Caspelli. You should be 100 because I've got Bell, Bell and Justum. It's halved. 50 is not really a lot for our prestige. So yeah, let's go for it. Right, pause the game. Let's raise the men. I don't want to destroy you, man. Me, <laughs> as an infirm man, I will, uh... No, you won't accept. Why not? No, you don't really like me that much. He'll come and help me, though. Alright, let's muster, and then let's buggy. I'll lead the army, even though I should probably be in bed resting, and this might actually kill me from overexerting myself. But, where's the fun staying in bed all day? Oh wait, I'm lazy. There's a lot of fun. Now, his guys are probably going to join him as well. His, weirdly enough, quite close to each other. It does look like he's running away. I want to try and take out his army before his friends get here and the group up together. That's the opposite of what we really want to happen. I don't think I'm going to catch him. I'll get there in three days. He's in glad. Oh no, I've got him! He's got no men at arms, whereas I do. That's good. I've got a much better advantage. He's got Holy Warrior, whereas I've got Aggressive Attacker and a Military Engineer. Aggressive Attacker will come into play. Military Engineer, not too much. He is getting the floor. Even though he's got higher quality people, I just wiped the floor with him. And just like that. He'll pop off. I'm gonna just go and take his place. Interesting that their allies are about to just straight up attack our allies. So that might affect the score a tiny bit. That's fine, because I'm about to take his only place, so it should just be easily just ticked over. Alright. Let's get sieging. Now, every two weeks of the Siege event, it can change how quick it speeds up. Um, 
it also changes like what supplies they have, and if you've got siege, we siege weapons, it can start damaging the walls, um, which then makes it easier to attack because you can just assault. Well, that army could appear, but our friends are oh, they're all coming. So they were waiting for those four people to join up, really? That's a bit weird. Now, if my friends join up with me, we will still technically have the advantage, but only just. But if I take this place before to get here, I might be able to end the war before that. And then you get here. Pretty soon, it's going to be an interesting one. Ah! I've taken his son and heir. Beautiful. If you take certain people hostage, it does basically complete it. So I'm going to go ahead and enforce my demands. Bish bash bosh. Just like that, we've got it. You know, years be short and miserable. Oh, he does not know. <laughs> so be it. Perfect. So, I'm going to disband my army, because I now don't need them. I'm going to quickly reevaluate my power and check out Caritina. Okay. So the claim started for Achaia. And currently trying to be friends with uh, Chrysaphius over there. Let's see how that goes. I'm surprisingly still alive. Um, I've now been infirm for five years? And I'm still kicking around. My children are also still alive. He has finally inherited Hale, but he did not inherit quick. I just want one child to inherit both. That would be like the 10 out of 10 moment. Oh well, um, because I've decided to make, give Nikolaus a stewardship education, I'm going to give Sol, my second born, a martial education. If I have a third son, I'll probably give him a diplomacy or learning education. If I have a second daughter, I'll probably put her in Intrigue. How old are my kids? 10, 7, 1. The age also is quite really cool. Characters look like strikingly different um, through the ages. It's really interesting watching them grow up and grow old. Oh wow. I lost a lot of prestige there. Whoops! Oh well. Still counts. See what the world looks like. Oh! That was very well timed. The map! My spies have informed me about a hunter causing the ruckus of a local tavern. The man has been spending a large amount of gold and bragging loudly about the great deal of struggle with a fancy lady in pearls and silks. Apparently, he drew a map of the local mountains for an unknown noblewoman. The spy thinks the lady must be scheming against me or one of my subjects. Oh god, I think I'm about to go to first stress level, boys. What an idiot. I am going to throw him in the dungeon. As I'm wrathful, of course. No criminal lying to imprison him. I gain more vigilant for five years, which is actually better for scheme resistance, but I do gain 70 stress, because I am a paranoid man. I am so close to having a crisis. So close. True enemy of every soldier is complacency, my marshal says before puffing his chest. We are standing side by side upon my castle walls, looking down on the soldiers conducting drills below. We could change the castle's gate for planks of wood and dull the arrows in the troops quiver, he continues. Lead the soldiers in a mock charge against the castle and see how well they do in action. Hmm. Defense? You know what? Let's have a bit of a sort of a tawny game. Should sort of round off today. A tightly shut gate and walls that loom high into the sky. Archers can be seen in the shadows, moving behind the battlements, and a feeling of genuine excitement permeates the air. In the lull before battle, I turn and address the soldiers. My orders ring out loud and clear across the field. So let's see, so we've got bring out ladders, the attack progresses well, charge the main gate. It might be very well, or we take heavy casualties for bring the bait down so it's poorly, or since I am a military engineer, I can literally just go, exploit the gate weak spots. Very well progress. Straight in. 
Staircase Echoes is another dual weapon bounces off the middle pillar. For the second time in a matter of minutes, I curse the tight spiral that blocks us from swinging our weapons at the defenders. The heaving breath of the soldiers around me is deafening, and with every repelled attack, they grow more resigned and frustrated. I have to take charge of the situation. Okay. So there's a chance I might get wounded, which will make my health even worse, and it's not great as it is. I'm still got to get I've got a severe health penalty. Which, you know. It's mad. Fortunately being Oh, that's why I'm still alive. My stubbornness is keeping me alive. I'm stubbornly infirm. Cool. So let's have a look. We take the stairs with brutal efficiency, stairs belly one with stumbling steps. It takes time, but everyone one at a time stay we're gonna go one at a time. Stay alert. Battlement bravado. Taking the final steps up onto the walls surrounding the castle, I survey the scene. Many soldiers may have been lost to the archers on the walls, but we will not be deterred. One after another, we overwhelm the defenders and stand victorious over the fallen. They say fallen, but you know. I take a deep breath, and then it is time to press on again. We are winning, but there is no room for mistakes. Now, I could say everyone with me, it'll progress very well. Archers take up your positions is like a safer option, but because I am an aggressive attacker, I have the choice of hit them hard. They are not your friends today, which gives them automatic very well progression. It's almost like I was built for this. The castle is ours. Among the celebrating soldiers, I find Theophilactos. Theophilactos. Close enough. Who congratulates me on a charge well led. Look at them, my lord. The charge of pace did them good. Even you seem reinvigorated, even though your castle was just lost to attackers. But I was the attacker. Now this, this is getting ridiculous. Now there's two of me. Oh, amazing. Improved defenses, fault level 1, garrison size 10%, and I get a lifestyle for choice. I think that's pretty good. Well, I was at the market with Nikolaus, our firstborn. The attention was caught by a criminal chained in the pillory. When a man begged for water, Nikolaus immediately promised to bring it, and soon returned from a nearby well, letting the criminal drink from his cupped hand. Oh man, this is going to seriously stress me out. So I can make him callous, which I don't really want him to become tyrannical. This criminal is not even worth your attention, I can give him arrogant. Which will be good for prestige, but in general, it'll make things a lot harder in his life. Compassion is generally a good one to get. Obviously, you're not as dreadful like my character is now, but the diplomacy is super helpful, and it's also a virtuous trait for orthodoxy, so you actually get a little bit of piety. Job done! Following the death sentence of a lowly thief, I asked my son and heir Nikolaus what he thought. He expressed doubts about whether any god could want a realm to be ruled by such a harsh law. Wow! Do not expect to see God's justice. Make him cynical. Well... He doesn't need to love God. He must be taught... Oh boy. Just. Just is good for stewardship, to be fair. And temperate. Temperate's really good. And it's also virtuous. It gives you a small health boost. The only issue is... It's going to push me over the edge a bit, but for the sake of making my air better, so my next character, it's kind of worth it. So here we go, boys. Get ready for a midlife crisis. Yeah, here we go. Sometimes I feel like the entire world rests upon my soldier shoulders. My responsibilities as a count are endless. I hardly have a moment left to myself. Okay. So I just drank. And I'll lose 14 stress. I could regain reclusive, which is less diplomacy, stress lost, lose 27 stress. I try by fruit, I become irritable, which increases my prowess but loses my martial, gains my dread. <laughs> Ugh, and I could gain even more stress and go to level 2 of stress. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna drink the pain away. Still in stress level one, so things might get a little bit dicey. It does affect your health as well, and you know, we're currently we are balancing on a very tight wire here for our health. 
I'm proud to see my daughter no longer a child, but as an adult. With an excellent grasp of all manners of etiquette, an understanding of all kinds of entertainment, and the eloquence to go with it, she'll have little trouble navigating her life at court. She becomes a charismatic negotiator. That's almost the, almost the best one. Good job. Wow. And instantly they're married, and she's off to Lotharangia. See you later, Valeria. Survive. To the vile Count Saul. Who are you? Peasant revolt. We have been burning your oppressive laws far, for far too long, and while we are done paying your taxes, once your coffers are dry up and your larders are empty, you'll wish you had treated us more fairly. Well. You angered me, son. Rally the troops. I am a vengeful man. Alright, let's get to it then. Now, we are a peasant rabble. So, I'm going to put the rally point. Which is there, which is fine. Get everyone raised. Alright, they've got seven more men than me. This should be... this might be a close one. I'll teach them this for rebelling and making my uh, twilight years very stressful, although my children are already making sure to do that. I'm going to deal with this peasant result, revolt, and then we're probably going to call it for the day. Alright, bring it on. What's your name? I don't even know who you are. Anthemos? Weren't you one of my, uh... No, you just share the same name. Oh, that should be interesting. Now, we've got higher quality troops. So even though we have less, we should be okay. It's in our favor. What's his martial? He's got quite a good martial skill. And he's wounded. Yes, I'll sh show you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. See you later. Victory. I could have called my allies into war. There wasn't really much point. I will be enforcing my demands. Get in jail. And just like that, disbanded, and the faction has tied itself off. Oh god, can you not just see I just got home from waging a war against my own peasants? Viviana has just insulted my honor. I demand that you cast a loathsome doxy from my court. Yes, dear. Hmm, let's see. She'll be gone by tomorrow! Get out of here. Alright, cool. Well, with our country county in the best position it's been, uh, this is now safe. There's no factions against us. Surprisingly, we're still not dead. We are literally too angry and stubborn to die, which fits me, fits us to a T. I'm quite happy with it. Um, I'm going to call it for the day. But first, I'm just going to get some quick prestige. There we go. Left myself a little even a little bit better for next time. As always, feel free to leave a like, uh, a comment, or subscribe to the channel um, to be further entertained in this walkthrough, as well as many other playthroughs down the line. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.